Hello guys, how is everyone doing? It's Professional here. So today I have my very first Saints Row lore video. I really hope that you guys enjoy this and I have many more of these planned and in this video I'm going to be talking about why Julius betrays the player or the boss. In Saints Row 1, the main character, he's called the player, but in Saints Row 2, he is the boss. Now, a lot of people, they seem to think that the main reason that Julius betrayed um, the player was because he was arrested by Troy, but it goes way deeper than this, and there's actually a whole big explanation on this, and I'm gonna be breaking down Julius's character in this, so I hope you guys enjoy this. So now the player, the main character, he is believed to be originally from the Saints Row district, as the first time that we see him is when he's walking down the street where all four gangs have a giant confrontation. It ends in a bloodbath, and the player is knocked to the ground, He's about to be executed by a Vice King when Troy shoots him. Now a lot of people think that Julius shot the Vice King, but this was really Troy who did that. Most likely because Troy saw the player as an innocent civilian about to be gunned down and saved him. Troy was an undercover cop after all. That's why he saved the player. But he was unhappy that Julius wanted to recruit him to the gang because Troy, his ultimate objective was to infiltrate the Saints and bring down all the gangs. And this includes the Saints themselves. You look so bad, you should be fine. That's Troy. You can thank him later. Hey. The row ain't safe no more, son. You got gangs fighting over shit that ain't theirs. And you in the way? They don't care if you represent or not. Julius, this is no time to recruit. We need all the help we can get, son. No, we need to get our asses out of here. In a minute. Look, the row's got a problem. Come to the church when you want to be a part of the solution. The player, he's recruited into the Saints, and he works his way up to help the Saints wipe out the Vice Kings, the Rollers, and the Los Carnales. No, I'm joking, just the Carnales. Now, it's important to understand exactly how the Saints were formed. We know the boss brought them back in Saints Row 2, but how were they originally formed? Where did the Saints come from? So, in the 1970s, Julius grew up with his best friend, Benjamin King. Yes, this is the same king that formed the Vice Kings. The Carnales, they were the first gang that was formed in the city. Yo, hey man, didn't hear you come in. Check this out. The Carnales were the first organized gang in the city. The way Julius tells it, they owned the whole damn town until Benjamin King stepped up against them. Tell you what though, I ain't worried about the history so much as I am the fact that A, the Lopez brothers are crazy motherfuckers, and B, Victor, their enforcer, survived a dozen VK drive-bys. Sounds pretty bad, right? Now add in that the Carnales are backed by the largest drug cartel in the world, and I think you'll understand why we're gonna play this safe instead of pulling a Johnny. We cut off their income first, then we go for Hector. Sound good? And they took every district over. The Carnales, they terrorized the city. They would extort the entire city, and they would flood it with drugs. And they eventually, they moved their way into Sunnyvale Gardens, where Julius and Ben King were from. Ben King then formed the Vice Kings to step up against them, and Julius formed it with King. Yes, Julius was one of the founders of the Vice Kings. Here is some of Julius's audio logs talking about his time in the Vice Kings. Founded in the 1800s, Stillwater always was a city of great diversity and promise. But the peak of Stillwater came in the 1970s. While the downtown area was as popular as ever, the crown jewel in Stillwater's crown was the district of Saints Row, a testament to architecture and urban planning. Mission Beach was the most prestigious neighborhood to live in. However, the peace and tranquility was shattered when Alejandro Lopez moved to town. Backed by Colombian drug czars, Lopez not only controlled the vice trade, but he created the first major street gang in Stillwater, Los Canales. Los Canales spread like a cancer. Within months, Lopez's empire was spread throughout Stillwater. One of the neighborhoods that was hit the worst was Sunnyvale Gardens. The Carnales swept through Sunnyvale demanding protection fees, pushing drugs, and bringing gang warfare to the streets. Tired of the violence in his neighborhood, my childhood friend Benjamin King organized the kids in Sunnyvale to stand up for themselves. And the Vice Kings were born. by their desire to take back their neighborhood, the Vice Kings surged. In a matter of days, Sunnyvale was free of the Canales, but Ben King didn't stop there. Over the next months, the Vice Kings and the Carnales battled to control the Stillwater. And while the Carnales were reduced to a fraction of their former glory, the cost had been high. 
Not only was Stillwater torn apart, but Ben King had grown accustomed to power and refused to give it up. Rather than continue to be a leg breaker for Benjamin, I dropped my flags and moved to Saints Row. Sadly, my retirement was relatively short lived. When the Vice King stopped being about protecting Sunnyville, I knew it was time to get out of the game. I was hoping that Benjamin could keep the city locked down, but years passed, and it ended up being the same old shit. Only this time, the victims were the people in Saints Row. I thought the Vice Kings was a cautionary tale that I learned something from. That if I built a new street gang, I could control it, not make the same mistakes King did. I was so fucking naive. I don't regret much. You make your choices, you live with them. But if I could take anything back, it would be the way things ended up with Angela. It was all fun and games for her. She wanted to be just like Benjamin. I shouldn't have let her get in so deep. So that's one of the few things that I do like about Saints Row 4 is that it does have audio logs about all the different characters and you understand their motivations better. And so as you guys heard, Julius grew up alongside Ben King and helped him form the Vice Kings. Julius, he dated Ben King's sister, who he, who he said wanted to be just like King. It's unknown exactly what happened to her, but it's heavily implied that she died in some kind of gang attack. This may have been the reason why Ben King tried to make his gang as legitimate as possible and get away from the gang wars. Julius, he is a hypocrite though. He left the Vice Kings because he claimed they became more violent, specifically towards the people of Saints Row, but in the same statement, is almost appearing to criticize Ben King for getting away from the criminal part of his gang. This makes no sense. Take a listen to this. As the years went by, Benjamin King started to direct his focus to legitimate business ventures, and his criminal empire suffered for it. Not only did the Carnales regain their strength, but a new gang, the West Side Rollers also tried to make a name for themselves. For a while, these three gangs tore each other apart. But once the violence spilled into Saints Row, I had to do something. Like Benjamin, I gathered the people of this neighborhood and gathered them in this very building. Here is where the Third Street Saints were born. He claims the Vice Kings got too violent, and then claims the Carnales regained their strength and the Rollers became a new gang because Ben King wanted to legitimize? I thought that he was against the gang violence. So in essence, that is why the Third Street Saints were formed. I doubt many of them knew that Julius wasn't even from Saints Row. Even us, when we play the game, were led to believe that Julius is from Saints Row until Ben King tells us the truth. And so we're basically going to lead the Vice so Kings into a trap. about growing up in Sunnyvale? No, he doesn't. Julius pretends like he's from Saints Row. What? You thought he was from the Row? The problem with being the past is that you forget about it. You know what I'm saying? I bet Julius gave you the whole I don't care what flags are flying speech, didn't he? I wrote that shit years ago, and the motherfucker still hadn't forgotten it. So not only does Julius deceive people on where he is from, but he also plagiarized Ben King's speech. This is the I don't care what flags they are flying speech. Every motherfucker here knows what we need to do. Now those bitches be riding around here thinking they own these streets. I don't care what flags they flying. Rollers, Carnales, Vice Kings. No one's making this nigga scared to walk the road. We about to lock this shit down right now. Yeah. All right, yeah! Yeah! Fuck yeah. yeah! Who the fuck's this guy? Troy and I found him. We're gonna see if he'll ride with us. Julius, if he wants to run with the Saints, he gotta be canonized. Hey, he's right, Julius. Everyone had to do it. You ready for this, player? Listen up, people. I got some serious shit to discuss. Yeah, we cleared out the road. You think for a second that's gonna stop him? Unless we wipe all these motherfuckers out, they're gonna keep coming. And they ain't gonna be happy. It ain't gonna be settled until the Carnales, the Rollers, and the Vice Kings ain't nothing but a memory. Dex, you got the Carnales. Ever since they hooked up with the Colombians, it's like they own this town. And with that drug money rolling in, we can't compete. Be smart how you move against them. The Lopez family been running that gang for 30 years. There's a reason they're still around. Got it. Troy, you dealing with the Vice Kings. 
Not a chance. Fuck you say? Anyone but them. You scared of going against Benjamin King? Man, fuck that. I'll take King out. Johnny, it's not that simple. Bullets still kill motherfuckers, right? Doesn't get much simpler than that. Keep an eye on your boy. I don't need a fucking babysitter, Julius. Keep an eye on your boy. Who's got the rollers? I do. Lynn? The fuck you wearing blue for? I asked Lynn to hook up with the rollers. We don't know much about these fuckers, so I wanted one of us on the inside. I didn't think the rollers pimped hoes. <laughs> oh! <laughs> Any other comments? Yeah, when you punch, don't throw your shoulders so much. Shut up, Johnny. Hey, I'm just saying. Once we're done here, go talk to one of these guys. They'll have something for you to do. It's our time now. Let's get this shit started. The boss also copies this exact same speech in Saints Row 2. He does a very similar one to it, and where did he learn it from? He learned it from Julius, of course. Alright, everybody listen up. We got some serious shit to discuss. The Saints used to own Stillwater, and it seems like the only motherfuckers that remember that is me and Gat. I think it's time we give those other crews a wake-up call. Now, I ain't gonna lie, a lot of shit's changed since I've been out of the game, so I'm gonna need some help. Pierce, you're on the Ronin. I wanna know who's calling the shots and what businesses they running. Done. Shandi, you got the sons of Samdi. It's gotta be them. Fuck you say? It's cool. <laughs> I, I got this. Carlos. The Brotherhood. I'm on it. Alright. Once we're done here, talk to one of these guys. They'll have something for you to do. It's our time now. Let's get this shit started. Julius claimed he, want the, he wanted the Saints to be different than the Vice Kings, but he acted just like them. At the start of the game, Julius claims we need to wipe out all the other gangs or they will keep coming for us. Apparently, only the Saints are allowed to be a gang. Yes, all of the gangs were fighting in Saints Row, but at the start of the game, you kicked them out of the row. None of the other gangs ever attack the row again until you start attacking them. Julius even has you attack the Rollers, who really had no problem with the Saints other than being in their turf in the prologue, which again, they didn't attack the Saints again. Half of the Rollers didn't even know who the Saints were in the first place. Just listen to what Donnie said. Whatever. I think... They all got away. That's what the word is. How did this happen? Our crew from Saints Row fucked up our boys. Who? Same guys who fucked up my shop. I think they're the 5th Street altar boys The 3rd Street Saints. Mm, what she said. Will you stop smoking that shit? I need you to focus. If you need me to focus, I'd pass that shit back. <coughs> Donnie. Alright, alright. You got some time before the buyers need those parts, right? The buyers? Oh, there are a bunch of guys overseas that Mr. Sharp knows. Donnie, do we have to have another conversation? Sorry. Don't worry about it. Just think. Give me some time. I bet Lynn and I can whip something up. Okay. You game for that, Lynn? Hey, anything I can do to help. Julius is clearly the aggressor in all of these gang wars. Yes, all of these rival gangs, they are scumbags, I will admit to that, and they did deserve to get wiped out, but the point I'm making is that Julius started these wars, and he acts like he's the peacemaker. In fact, Ben King is the best peacemaker in the game. Ben King wanted to help his gang and childhood friends get out of the hood. The Carnales were attacking Sunnyvale, and they were doing horrible things. Ben King stood up to them and kicked them out. Once his gang got a foothold, he eventually got money together, obviously through illegal means. But he invested it properly. He bought supermarkets, which is King's, King's Grocery, which still exists in Saints Row 2. He bought Kingdom Come Records, a massive record studio, which signs on different musicians and celebrities. Kingdom Come Records, they did extort musicians, but who did they target? Rich celebrities and singers. I'm not saying what they were doing is right, but it's a lot less worse than dealing drugs or fighting gangs over territory, or even stealing cars like the Rollers. With what the Vice Kings were doing, the least amount of people were getting hurt. They also had connections to the police and Mare, which King, he used that to protect his gang and also keep them under control. The Vice Kings, because of this, were not engaging in massive violence. I know some people are going to bring up the fact that the Vice King kidnapped Aisha's sister, but there's no way that Ben King did that. As Dex says, kidnapping isn't King's style. Some motherfuckers grabbed Aisha's sister right off the street. Shit, man. That's the sixth girl this month. We know who's doing this? Yeah, the Vice Kings. No way, man. Kidnapping ain't King's style. Maybe that's like Tanya's going behind King's back. Don't know, don't fucking care. Now, Aisha said they were driving a yellow sedan. Tail those bitches back to wherever they go and get those girls back! 
Warren was doing this alongside Tanya, who was going against Ben King's back. If Ben King found out that Warren and Tanya were kidnapping girls, he would either kill them or exile them from the gang, telling them to drop their flags like he tried to tell Warren before Warren betrayed him. Warren is most likely the same guy who sent the Vice Kings in the Saints Row at the start of the game. Ben King is also against drugs, which he clearly says here. Keep talking, little nigga. If you hadn't wasted our time sticking your nose up them white boys' asses, we could've owned the whole damn game by now! I told you before, we ain't getting into that shit. And why the fuck not? That's where the money is! Man, if you got done with that shit back in the day, the Carnales would've been ghosts right now! But you didn't, did you? You were too much of a pussy then! And you're too much of a pussy now! I'll have a video talking more in depth about the Vice Kings in the future, but I just want to focus on Julius here. The reason I'm bringing up these things is because clearly Ben King is the more moral one. He's the more moral leader. Yes, he's still a gangster, but he has principles. He's against gang violence, seeing it as unnecessary, possibly getting people hurt and the police onto them. He sees it as being bad for business. He's against kidnapping and drugs. The reason he's against drugs is because he saw what drugs did when the Carnales spread it into Sunnyvale. Drugs are a catalyst for so many other crimes. This applies in real life. Once drugs show up, this opens Pandora's box for all sorts of bad things. What happens is drug dealers start dealing drugs. This creates addicts. Addicts then need money for their habits, and they can start committing crimes, robberies, burglaries to get money for drugs. Then prostitutes show up, seeing that drugs are being sold. And then lastly, gangs show up, fighting each other for turf to sell more drugs on. This leads to a ton of violence, property damage, and so many murders. This destroys neighborhoods, and Ben King knew this well. He knew that if he wiped out the Carnales, he may have issues with the Colombian cartel. And now because of the drugs, he would have so many more issues, which I listed above. That's why he doesn't deal drugs. He knows the Carnales won't step up against him, so he sees no need to fight them anymore. He's not dealing drugs, the Carnales are out of Sunnyvale, they're not selling it on his turf, so he has no reason to fight with them. But what about Julius? Julius, on the other hand, is a massive hypocrite. Remember what he says in his final cutscene? Old times, player. Yeah. Jesus. I thought we were past this. Not by a fucking long shot. Don't you get it? The Saints didn't solve a goddamn thing. Drugs were still being pushed. Innocent people were still getting killed. All we did was turn into vice kings that wore purple. Jesus Christ, you sound like a pussy. I sound like someone who's not a sociopath. Drugs were still being pushed. Innocent people were still getting killed. All we did was turn into vice kings that wore purple. The problem is, the vice kings never sold drugs. The Saints did, in both Saints Row 1 and 2. Julius put Dex in charge of fighting the Carnales, and then demanded he be the one to deal with the Colombians. Julius, I don't see what the big deal is. The deal is you want to talk to the Colombians without me. We didn't even get to meet him, Jules. And don't call me Jules, you haven't earned it. Fine. Julius, you put me in charge of the Los Carnales. Shit, now you got me saying it. Dex, do your job. Don't think you're bigger than you are. When it comes to the Colombians, you call me. Understand? Yeah. All right. Now that that's settled. So Julius has the Saints get rid of the Carnales, and then what does he do? He picks up where the Carnales left off from. He deals with Manuel and starts dealing drugs. He's a massive hypocrite. The boss should have told him, you were the one who got us into drugs. And the Saints also deal drugs in Saints Row 2, because the boss learned it from Julius. This is all Julius' fault. The Colombian cartel were a threat, but the situation could have been dealt with differently. The Colombian cartel aren't interested in war. They want to make money. Manuel was there to see if the Carnales were reliable partners. That was the whole purpose of him being there. When the Saints broke into the police station to get the drugs back, Julius should have told Manuel, Here's all your drugs back. We never attacked you or your people. Our problem was with the Carnales, not you. We wish you the best of luck, but we're not interested in dealing drugs. The Colombian cartel would have probably backed off at that point because they don't want to waste money and resources fighting the Saints in a war. Now, I know that some people are going to say the Colombian cartel could wipe out the Saints. They are one of the strongest criminal organizations in the world, and they probably could take on the Saints, but they wouldn't gain anything from it. They would just wipe them out, and then what? They just want to make money, like I said. Some people might say if Julius did that, they might kill him off and try to get the next leader to deal drugs with them. But as we know from The Godfather 1, this is a horrible way to do business. If the Colombian cartel tried to replace Julius by having him killed, every Saint would then go after them. The Colombians would just move on to the next city to deal in. And yes, the Saints would have followed Julius if he said no to drugs. How do I know this? Because the Saints, they were loyal to Julius. 
The whole gang was. Even if the player says, we're not dealing drugs, he would listen. He did whatever he was told. However, Julius has no intention of stopping the drug trade. He re reminds me a lot of Dutch in Red Dead Redemption and shows how manipulative he is. He claims we're doing this for the common good, but he does all these bad things and hurts so many people doing them. His speeches are meaningless, very similar to how Dutch Vanderlyn barely helps anyone. And he does all his crimes primarily for money and not the common good, just like Dutch says. Troy, you dealing with the Vice Kings? Not a chance. Fuck you say? Anyone but them. You scared of going against Benjamin King? Man, fuck that. I'll take King out. Johnny, it's not that simple. Bullets still kill motherfuckers, right? Doesn't get much simpler than that. Keep an eye on your boy. I don't need a fucking babysitter, Julius. Keep an eye on your boy. Looking good, Ben. Been a long time, Jules. Sorry about Anthony. That was business. Let it go. So what's the plan? We kill Tanya, and I get back to business. I don't think so, Benjamin. What? I said no. You alive, we straight. But the Vice Kings? They're through. Then kill me. Quit wasting my goddamn time. Well, you got a choice. You can keep your fucking pride and die right now. Or you can be a man and walk away. <laughs> when did you get the balls, Jules? What's it gonna be? I ain't walking away. Fair enough. Johnny? I ain't walking away until I deal with Tanya. My nigga. Johnny, put the damn gun down. Julius, I don't see what the big deal is. The deal is you went to talk to the Colombians without me. We didn't even get to meet them, Jules. And don't call me Jules, you haven't earned it. Fine. Julius, you put me in charge of the Los Carnales. Shit, now you got me saying it. Dex, do your job. Don't think you're bigger than you are. When it comes to the Colombians, you call me. Understand? Yeah. All right. Jesus. You haven't learned a goddamn thing. Wrong. I've learned that being in charge is better than being a bitch who keeps his mouth shut and does what he's told. Your time's over, old man. What's happened to you? I woke up. Mr. Little, I'm beginning to think we can do business. I'm glad we could work things out. So... How exactly would you like to move forward? Lo sabia! You'll die for what you did to my brother! I wonder if he means us or man what? Wait! I know where he'll go. That's where Angelo lives with his woman. Consider this payment for your... Act of good faith. So now that we have Julius's entire backstory and character explained, what happened? Why does he betray you? I wanted to note that Julius was not originally meant to betray you. The developers originally had another animation where he would run down an alley in the ending and someone else was meant to betray you, but because of the animation issues, they didn't want to bring back the, the animation team for just that scene. Instead, they did it where Julius is getting pulled over. He thinks it's just a traffic stop, but he's really getting arrested. The reason? Troy. Troy was a lieutenant in the Saints who was really an undercover cop. Troy's real goal was to bring down all the gangs, including the Saints. Troy got attached to a lot of the saints, and he feels bad for what he's doing. That's why he's drinking, and why he doesn't make an appearance in the epilogue, because he's interrogating Julius around that time. We did it, player. Third Street owns this town. Now, that's not to say shit didn't cost. And I ain't talking about what happened to Johnny's leg or losing limbs. Those two were soldiers. They knew the risk. Hell, Johnny gets off on it. We crushed a lot of families, player. And someday they're going to holler at us. But believe me when I tell you, we did the right thing. With the rollers wiped out, Benjamin gone, and the Colombians in our pocket, there ain't going to be a need for a gang war ever again. And in the end, that's going to save a lot more lives than we took. So relax, player. You earned yourself a break. You've impressed the hell out of me, son. And I told the crew, you're going to be in my right hand. Hold up. Some Barry just turned on his flashes. Yeah, player. I think I'm going to have to call you back. This may take a while. 
Around this time also, Chief Monroe tries to use the Saints as muscle, threatening Julius. This is Chief Monroe. If you want Julius back, listen to what I've got to say. Now that stunt you pulled downtown with a rocket launcher cost my associates and I quite a bit of money. You now, I may not be an honest man, man, but I'm a fair one. So rather than turn Saints Row into a parking lot, I'm gonna let you work off what you owe me. There's a mayoral campaign going on, and I want one of the candidates taken off the ballot. Marshal Winslow is in his campaign bus right now, and he has an appointment with the northbound. Park that bus on the train tracks tonight, or you'll find Julius's body floating in the river tomorrow. Don't disappoint me. Julius is counting on you. He has the Saints kill Marshall Winslow, a good man who actually wanted to help reform a lot of the neighborhoods. Marshall Winslow was the mayor of Stillwater and was actually going to offer the Saints pardons. Monroe wants him dead because he's paid by Alderman Hughes, Winslow's opponent who is a corrupt evil man who wants to gentrify Saints Row. This means he will buy the land cheaply, He'll then raise the rent prices, considering that most of the people rent in this neighborhood. Then he raises them so high that people can't afford it, and he kicks them all out of their homes. And then builds the area for middle class people, basically displacing all the working class people there. He then uses the Saints violence to claim he's getting rid of gang violence, winning the vote. Now, there is no proof that Troy was aware of what Chief Monroe or Alderman Hughes was doing, nor is there any proof that he was involved in that. The Saints um, get angry after Monroe refuses to, to release Julius. Did you handle it? Where the fuck is Julius? Have you heard back from Monroe? Nice work, but I don't think I can let Julius go until you do a little more community service. We'll be in touch. Looks like we wait. Why? So we can let this jag off jerk us around? Fuck that! And what would you rather do? You know exactly what I'd like to do. Johnny, we're not blowing up City Hall. I'm just saying, it would solve a lot of problems. What if they're keeping Julius there? Alright, but there's gotta be a better plan than let's be Monroe's bitches. You're right, there is. Marshall Winslow was a major public figure, and you can bet your ass that people would ask questions if the chief of police wasn't at his funeral. I say we hit Monroe during the funeral procession. That's to show whoever he's working with that we're not fucking around. You're saying we should assassinate the chief of police while he's at the funeral of the guy we just smashed? Yeah. <laughs> Don't tease me, Dex. Let's fucking do it. They decide to kill Chief Monroe during Winslow's funeral convoy. Now at this point, Alderman Hughes calls the player and tells him that it wasn't his plan to threaten the Saints, that that was all Chief Monroe, and that Julius is now out of jail, and that he wants to meet with him, and Julius is on his yacht. Now we know that this was a trap. Hello there, young man. This is Alderman Hughes. That was quite a message you sent at Winslow's funeral. And trust me, I heard it loud and clear. Now I'd like to set one thing straight. It was Monroe's plan to strong-arm the Saints. Personally, I've always thought you and I could have a much healthier relationship. Now, we've had a rocky start, yes, but why don't we fix that? Come over to my fundraiser tonight. Julius will be there, and between the three of us, I'm sure we can work something out. Alderman Hughes plans to kill you to silence you, and Julius is nowhere to be seen, making it very suspicious. The last time that we see Julius in Saints Row 1, we see him looking at his watch, counting down the timer on the bomb, and walks away. At first, I didn't know what this meant specifically, and then the explosion happens. The yacht explodes, and the player is knocked into a coma, and he wakes up five years later. If you do the secret mission, Revelation, in Saints Row 2, you begin to receive answers. When you explore the police station, you can find three wiretaps. The first one describes Dex getting a job at Ultor. What's up, Dex? I know you're a cop. The fuck are you talking about? Come on, man. Who you think you talking to? The tactics? The police station thing? Your shitty haircut? You got cop written all over you. So, what are you gonna do? Nothing. What? I'm out, Troy. I got offered a job at Ultor. I'm dropping my flags and I'm going straight. I just wanna make sure that we're not gonna have a problem. Now the next one is really important. This one is in an interrogation room. Julius is being interrogated and Troy tells Julius he will be let go and face no jail time 
if he can convince the Saints to drop their flags, which means to stop being gang members. Julius then refers to your character, the Playa, and says that there's no way that the Playa will stop. How you doing, Julius? I was doing better before I got arrested. I wanted to talk to you about that. I bet you do. Listen, Julius, you've made some bad choices, but you're a good man. Let, let me help you out. What do you want? I want the Saints to be gone, okay? Now, there's two ways that that can happen. You can arrest all of us. Or you guys can quit while you're ahead. All right, this is my investigation. I can miss a few collars. What are you saying? Dex is out of the game, and you're in jail. If you can convince Johnny and your number two to drop their flags, the Saints will fall apart, and everyone goes home happy. You don't think this will work, do you? You think I like arresting my friends? Convince them to quit, and I won't have to. There's no way that player's gonna stop. Make them understand. Let's say I can. How do I know I'm going free? I've already talked to the mayor. Hughes is willing to give you guys pardons. I'll see what I can do. Now the final one is the most important. This one, Troy freaks out and finds out what Julius did on the yacht. What the fuck was that? It was the only way. I said talk, not set off a goddamn bomb. Relax, Troy. The Saints are finished. Don't try to find me. That final wiretap saved Troy's life, because even though he was an undercover cop, the boss realized, in reality, he had nothing to do with the bombing. The boss goes into Troy's office and gets Dex's phone number. Dex tells him to meet him at the old church. How you doing, player? If you've gone through Troy's files, you know that Julius set you up. Meet me at the old church, and I'll tell you where to find Julius. Then the boss runs into his former gang boss, Julius. The fuck took you so long? You ain't Dex. Neither are you. You look different, did you? I didn't do shit to my hair. You pulling a gun on me? Well, I didn't have time to plant a bomb in the church, so this will have to do. You don't know what the hell you talking about. Why don't you educate me? I don't gotta explain shit to you. This is where we're gonna have to agree to disagree. Why don't you just put the gun down? We both know you're not gonna use it. Not yet. Stop! I never thought I'd see you beg, Julius. I'm not begging. I'm trying to talk some sense into you. I'm done listening to your bullshit. Put it together. Dex wanted us in the same place. Yeah, and why'd he want that? Can we kill each other later? They both get betrayed by Dex. Dex tries to have Julius killed to cut all loose ends and tries to kill you because you, the boss, are a threat to him and he knows how capable the player is. Julius and the boss, they fight the Masako team and they escape the church. And once they're all clear, the boss shoots Julius. Just like old times, player. Yeah. Jesus. I thought we were past this. Not by a fucking long shot. Don't you get it? The Saints didn't solve a goddamn thing. Drugs were still being pushed. Innocent people were still getting killed. All we did was turn into vice kings that wore purple. Jesus Christ, you sound like a pussy. I sound like someone who's not a sociopath. You want to be the killer with a conscience? Fine. Drop your flags and write a book like King, but you never should have came after me. You telling me, if I would have asked you to walk away, you would have said yes. Fuck no, this is my city. Jesus, you haven't learned a goddamn thing. Wrong. I've learned that being in charge is better than being a bitch who keeps his mouth shut and does what he's told. Your time's over, old man. What's happened to you? I woke up. You owe me, player. If it wasn't for me, you would have died on that street corner. If it weren't for you, I wouldn't have been in a goddamn coma. But I guess that makes us even. Not really. Julius claims that he, the player, doesn't understand that the Saints became bad people dealing drugs and killing innocent people. Julius tries to claim some kind of moral ground, claiming he doesn't sound like a sociopath. The boss says he should have dropped his flags and wrote a book like Ben King, and that he should have never came after him, which he's right. Julius could have reformed the Saints. 
he didn't suffer from the same problem Ben King did. Ben King had unloyal members. He surrounded himself with people like Tanya and Warren who constantly plotted against him. No one plotted against Julius, and they were all loyal to him. It's his fault the Saints turned out the way they did. Instead of reforming and legitimizing them, he created a monster that he couldn't control. Then in his final moment, he pulls off a really arrogant move where he claims that the player owes him for saving him in Saints Row 1. What Julius is forgetting is that it was Troy who saved the player not himself. Troy was the one who shot the Vice King, not Julius. A lot of people think that it was Julius who shot the Vice King. In reality, that was Troy. The player's comeback is actually good, where he says, if it wasn't for you, I wouldn't have been in a coma. Then Julius says, that makes us even, to which he says, not really, and kills him. I think that there's ulterior motives here. Julius was arrested. He considered talking to the Saints to get them to step down. He may have been concerned that they'll see him as a rat, and then he decided to eliminate the player. Johnny got arrested, and Julius could care less about this. I think Julius tried to take this moral approach, telling himself he did no wrong, when in reality he did. He did. Who encouraged the gang warfare? Julius. Who approved of the gang killings? Julius. Remember what he said? You earned your colors today. That's some impressive shit. The only other saint who kicked ass like that was Johnny. Shit took me half the time. Welcome to the Third Street Saints. Let's get down to business. If we're serious about taking back the row, we gotta let those motherfuckers know what time it is. Now you break it down, and it's all about respect. Get enough of it, they're gonna back off, and we're gonna move right on in. We got some friends in town that could use some help. Give them a hand. Cause, you can always drop any motherfucker flying the wrong flag. So long as word gets out that the Saints is on the row, I don't give a damn how you do it. You feel me? Just drop anybody with the wrong flags. When he says flags, he's talking about the different gangs. Who got the Saints into drugs? Julius. What difference is it if the gang selling the drugs is wearing red like the Carnales or purple like the Saints? In reality, there's no difference. Julius claims he was naive to think he could control the Saints, but he approved of all of these bad things. Ben King is the more moral one. His actions clearly show it. He doesn't engage in unnecessary violence. He doesn't sell drugs or do kidnappings. He tried to legitimize his gang, but not once does Ben King claim he's a good person, which to be fair, he isn't, but he's clearly the more moral one. Julius, on the other hand, acts like he's a reformed man who is an actual saint, not the gang, by the way. He does probably believe a lot of the things he says, but in reality, a lot of it is his fault. He had many opportunities to avoid a lot of the bad things, but that didn't stop him. It's just like Dutch talking about how bad the other gangs are in Red Dead Redemption. We are the good guys, when in reality, you're doing the exact same things as the other gangs, and in some cases, even worse than them. He takes no personal responsibility on his part. What is Julius's ultimate downfall? His downfall is that he developed a conscience too late. He should have had that conscience earlier, before all the murders, before the gang violence, and before the drugs were brought in. He let all of that slide, thinking it was for the greater good, and then realized, oh crap, we're just as bad as the gangs we wiped out. And that's his ultimate downfall. He's a man who gave these nonsense speeches to inspire his gang, but when he saw the money the gang was bringing in, the violence and the drugs, he could care less about that at that point. Only when he gets arrested, he tried to eliminate the saints and see himself as some reformed figure. It was to save himself. This is exactly why Ben Ben King and Johnny never go after the boss for killing Julius because they understand what he did and the fact that he betrayed the boss. I knew early on what it was I let loose on Stillwater. The ply was reckless and uncaring. Left a wake of bodies pointing right back at us. Think more of the city was destroyed than saved in the end. Sure, the saints were taken over, but at what cost? I couldn't risk letting a sociopath run things, so I did what I had to do. Never thought the bastard would survive the explosion. But there's one final thing I wanted to mention about Julius, which is, why was he at the church in the first place? I bet a lot of people didn't think about this. Why is Julius at the church? Why was he there, right when the boss walked in? What does Julius say? You ain't Dex. Neither are you. You ain't Dex. He was expecting to meet Dex there. Dex lured the boss there by telling him that he will tell him where to find Julius. But how did he trick Julius? I doubt he told Julius the same thing. Why would Julius go to the church if he knew the boss was there? He wouldn't, because he knew the boss would kill him. So how did Dex get him there? Let's look at what Julius' occupation is. What does he do for a living? The newspaper says it right here. He's the tour guide for the church. And this is no regular church. 
Sure, it's the former base of the Saints, but this church is a tourist attraction. Right in front of the Phillips Building, Altor's massive skyscraper, the church was remodeled to serve as propaganda on why they are a moral and great corporation. Just listen to Julius here. Hello, and welcome to Stillwater Memorial Church. My name is Julius Little, and it's no secret I've wasted many years of my life being a part of the gang problem here in Stillwater. Fortunately, the Ultor Corporation has given me a second chance. Join me as I take you through the past and future of Saints Row. Julius went from being a gangster to selling his soul to a large corporation and spreading their propaganda for profit. Julius speaks highly of Ultor, but we know that Ultor is a very evil corporation. They want a complete monopoly on Stillwater, and they probably want it on all over America. They kidnap people and do human experimentation on them in the pyramid, as well as having their own private army. Now, some people may argue, maybe Julius, Julius didn't know about that. Maybe he didn't know about the human experimentation. Dex sent the Masako. Looks like he means business. The target's in position. Bring in the Masako This could be going better. However, even if he didn't know about that, he would obviously know about Ultor's gentrification of St Saints Row. What is gentrification? Gentrification is when rich people buy property in poor neighborhoods like Saints Row. Since most people rent already in these areas, the rich people or the large corporations, in this case Ultor, just raise the rent prices, which ev eventually evicts and displaces all the poor people from the area. Once they displace the poor, they tear down all the old buildings and then rebuild them to make them look nice and fancy. However, it's all a trick, because the same poor people who live there would not be able to afford it. The same poor people who lived in Saints Row no longer live there. They have been displaced and live in Sunnyvale and Shivington now. The same with the gangs. Ultor didn't fix the gang problem. They just moved it to another area. All those people, they lost their homes and their livelihoods because of this greedy corporation. And then they act like it's a major success. They even brag about it on TV about how they displaced the poor. Just listen to this. Now, some misguided people would say that by turning Saints Row into a glass and steel utopia, all you've accomplished was the displacement of low-income families, which, you know, to me, sounds like an added bonus. Well, I don't know about it being a bonus, but it's like my father said, and if you're going to build an ivory tower, you're going to have to kill a few elephants. And what does Julius do now? He serves as a propaganda speaker for Ultor. Just listen to what he says about the corporation. city was shrouded by fear and apathy. The Altor Corporation took a stand where no one else would. By working closely with Monica Hughes, Altor created an urban renewal program that not only created jobs and housing, but created safety as well. The Saints Row you are now standing in is the furthest thing from the violent streets of yesteryear. And with your help, it will never turn back. So he spouts propaganda for the company. A lot of comments that I see, people are saying that Julius is reformed and he's a good person now, but they don't think about this point. He works for a large corporation that displaced all the poor from the same neighborhood he once lived in. Julius said he formed the Saints to protect Saints Row, but now works for a corporation that threw all the people out who he claimed to protect. Not everyone in Saints Row is a gang member. What Ultor did would have been a success if the same poor people lived there. 
but they don't. And Ultor owns all the property in Saints Row, which they get massive profits from, all the rent and all the businesses. It's all for self-interest. And this is the reason Julius was at the church. Julius would have to be a complete idiot to not realize that Ultor is using him for propaganda. It's a great cover. A reformed gang member giving tours of the church, explaining how Ultor saved the community. It boosts Ultor's image to the public. That or Julius knows, and he's just in on it for the money. It's this one. Someone like Julius is very smart to organize the saints and take down all the other gangs. Julius is no fool. He knows very well what he's doing. So next time someone tells you Julius was a good person now, he's reformed, just tell them he's the propaganda speaker for a large corporation that displaced hundreds of thousands of poor people. He sold Saints Row out for profit. I'm not saying the Saints are great people, but at least when the Saints controlled Saints Row, people still had their homes. A lot of these people became homeless because of Ultor. Julius is at the church for one simple reason. Why is he there? Because Dex offered him a higher position in the company. That's the only thing I can think of. Dex is a very powerful executive in Ultor, and he would be able to easily find Julius if he wanted to. He lured Julius there, telling him to meet him at the church and that he has a new higher position in the company available for him. That's why he says, you ain't Dex, because he was expecting Dex. Julius, like the opportunist he is, was excited to get a higher position in Ultor. Then, when he saw the boss, he started realizing Dex betrayed him. During the reign of the Third Street Saints, this building was no stranger to violence. And what few pews remained in the condemned church were often stained with blood. But what was the epicenter for violence in Saints Row has since become an icon for rebirth. After Alderman Hughes' assassination, one of my lieutenants, a strategist named Dex, accepted a job at Alto and made it his first order of business to return this building into the icon it was in the 70s. After painstaking and exacting restoration efforts spanning two years, Alto is proud to open these churches. There's gotta be something to do around again. here. He had no reason to think that Dex wanted him dead. Julius worked for years in Altor and thought that Dex could help him, but it backfired on him big time. And that is the story of Julius, a gang leader that said he formed the Saints to protect Saints Row, but it might have been for selfish reasons. He did all the same things the other gangs did, and made no attempt to make the Saints different. He sold drugs for profit, participated in killings, and gang violence. Plenty of innocent people died in the crossfire. Julius didn't care. I think that his reformation in Saints Row 2 is more of an excuse than a refor reformation. It's more of, I'm a good person now, so let's forget the past. His conscience may be sincere, we don't know. We have the audio logs, but we don't know his exact state of mind. Like I said, he speaks nicely, but works for an evil corporation, and shows up hoping to get a higher position from Dex. There's also a few Roman Easter eggs when it comes to Julius. Julius has the exact same name as Julius Caesar, one of ancient Rome's most powerful conquerors. Troy has the same name as the ancient city of Troy in which the Greeks tried to take. When they couldn't take Troy, they sent the Trojan horse in a w as a wooden horse as a gift, and this had Greek soldiers in it, and then they took the city. Troy is that Trojan horse. He infiltrated the saints. But Julius, on the other hand, acted just like the ancient Romans. How? Julius used the exact same argument as the Romans used to try to justify their conquering. How did the Romans excuse their conquest to their people? How did they justify it to their people? They largely claimed that it was a policy of self-defense, that if we don't attack and take the other civilizations, they will attack us and destroy us first. And on top of that, we are bringing them peace and prosperity. Rome used the same argument for a long time. They invaded land after land, claiming it's only a matter of time until they attack us, so we will attack them first. And what does Julius say? Listen up, people. I got some serious shit to discuss. Yeah, we cleared out the road. You think for a second that's going to stop them? Unless we wipe all these motherfuckers out, they're going to keep coming. And they ain't going to be happy. It ain't going to be settled until the Carnales, the Rollers, and the Vice Kings ain't nothing but a memory. He uses the same argument. The other gangs will attack us eventually. If we don't attack them first, and he claims the Saints are better than the other gangs, taking a moral position when they are just as bad. The Saints are bringing peace to Stillwater when they aren't. I think that Julius' ultimate downfall isn't that he had a conscience. It's like I said earlier. It's that he had developed a conscience too late. He had plenty of time to make the Saints different, and people would have followed him. They looked up to him. Instead, he taught the Saints how to be the worst gangsters and then betrayed them. Julius has himself to blame ultimately for that. He wanted to be different than the Vice Kings, but was actually worse. Ben King never sold drugs, but Julius did. And that is the story of Julius Little and why he betrayed the Saints. Overall, I had a lot of fun making this video. 
I have plenty of other Saints Row lore videos that I have planned. I wanted to do a video on Julius because a lot of people don't understand his exactly his betrayal and why he did what he did. I hope this video explained a lot of the misconceptions and you learned something more. This is when Saints Row used to have a great story and character. The fact that I can do such a large video on one character shows how awesome Saints Row 1 and 2 were. These were great games and an actual competitor to GTA, a competitor. Not a clone, like ignorant people claim. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did drop a like, it does help me to make more content like this. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I will see you on the next one, and take care, everyone. Just like old times, player. Yeah. Jesus. I thought we were past this. Not by a fucking long shot. Don't you get it? The Saints didn't solve a goddamn thing. Drugs were still being pushed. Innocent people were still getting killed. All we did was turn into vice kings that wore purple. Jesus Christ, you sound like a pussy. I sound like someone who's not a sociopath. You want to be the killer with a conscience? Fine. Drop your flags and write a book like King, but you never should have came after me. You telling me, if I would have asked you to walk away, you would have said yes. Fuck no. This is my city. Jesus. You haven't learned a goddamn thing. Wrong. I've learned that being in charge is better than being a bitch who keeps his mouth shut and does what he's told. Your time's over, old man. What's happened to you? I woke up. You owe me, player. If it weren't for me, you would have died on that street corner. If it weren't for you, I wouldn't have been in a goddamn coma. But I guess that makes us even... Not really.